Let's, uh, let's start off with a prayer. Father, thank you for this beautiful day you've given us, just the, the sunshine and just the fellowship. Father, we thank you for everybody that is here today. Uh, yeah, Father, we, uh, we are here because we, uh, we want a fresh touch from Jesus. And so, Father, I just pray that you'll send your Holy Spirit to, to guide us as we worship and help us to give you the best of our hearts and our minds and our voices. Uh, Father, if you have anything to say to us today, uh, we're listening. Help us to listen even better. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We join in our praise song this morning. Thou art worthy, the words are on the screen. Awesome. That that thing you that's from a movie. Was that in Ben Hur? Where's that from? Exodus. Exodus. Gosh. So the, the music team is just rocking the sanctuary today. That's wonderful. Um, a couple of announcements that I want to uh, kind of put out there for everybody. Uh, first of all, the November December upper rooms are available there in the back back there. So if you uh, if you would like to grab one of those, then please do so. Um, so today, following the, the service, uh, we have what, what is called the Pastor Appreciation Covered Dish Luncheon. Uh, and and I, I told you last Sunday, I'm, I'm not a big fan of, of that, uh, the title especially, um, because if, if you ever look to me and you see anything good, um, yeah, my prayer is that, uh, that you, what you're really seeing is the God that can take someone like me and do something good with him. So, uh, so this is a, a, a God appreciation covered dish meal. Please come and be a part of that. I mean, even if you forgot whatever, you left your casserole at home, come and join us anyway because uh, God's going to 
uh, do do great things, and we're going to have all kind of stuff to eat. And so please, please come and be a part of that if you if you would. Um, and then this Thursday at 7 o'clock, we have the informational meeting with our district superintendent. And I want to make sure everybody knows about that so we can come and get, uh, get the, you know, the information. She's going to give us a talk about the future of the United Methodist Church. So please come and, and be a part of that. Uh, that's, that's an important meeting for us. Uh, and then coming up October the 30th, the track and treat. Again, that's a, a great outreach for our kids here at the track. Uh, if you can provide a vehicle and you can park out on the track and, and hand out candy, that's great. If you can't do that, uh, I estimate if, if you're a, a, a two-candy piecer like I am, uh, we're going to need about 9,000 pieces of candy. Um, so if you, if you won't, just bring, uh, just bring some bags of candy if you can't make the, the actual event. Um, and you know, like I said, Jesus doesn't hand out Tootsie Rolls. Uh, so enough said about that one. Uh, also, next week, Tuesday, November the 1st, we're going to have the, uh, the vision team uh, will be meeting again, and uh, that's open to anybody. Uh, I think what's going to happen, we, we've gone out and the team has done a lot of great work, and we have, uh, we're working on the, the areas of focus that, uh, that we feel God is leading our church, uh, children's ministry, congregational care, outreach, worship, uh, and I know uh, we're going we're gonna to kind of present what we have in those areas. And so come and be a part of that, and then we'll start moving forward with that. So it's a good time. It's a great time to be at, uh, at Grace Chapel. And I think, did I, did I miss anything? Yes, ma'am. And I wasn't nervous until I just looked out and actually focused in the pews. And, and so my boss is sitting right there. So um, we will sing our final hymn and we will go and... Uh... I have an announcement. In the famous words of our pastor, here's the deal. It is Pastor Appreciation Day. And he told me that it was God's Appreciation Day, and he would not go first in the line, but, uh, you know, I'm on grant him not going first in the line, but we will honor him today because he is a great pastor, and we appreciate him very much. <laughs> pastor Philip, my goal for you is that you feel loved, encouraged and by doing that we have made a blessings jar so anytime you feel like you need a few words reach into this jar and you'll find a message from your congregation yeah. so there's that That's super That's wonderful. and then I've got this little poem because I'm all about little poems so I'm gonna read it okay <clears throat> pastor Philip with appreciation for your ministry what I pray for you is guidance for the paths your feet will follow wisdom for the counsel that you are asked to give, and compassion for those that you are called to help. What I wish for you is strength to stand for what is true and right, courage to press on even when things seem routine, perseverance to follow the desires that God has placed in your heart. And what I give to you is support for your leadership, appreciation for your calling and gifts, and thanks for the person that you are in Christ. You all are a great group of people. I've just been been honored and blessed uh, just in my short time that I've been here. So just uh, you guys are just special. Let's continue our worship as we return to God his tithes and our offering. Father, as we come here today, we take that step of faith to return back to you. 
Page 591 in your hymnal, Rescue the Perishing.
I mean, you know, the, the, uh, the scripture verse, when Jesus gives us his mission statement, basically he says, the Son of Man have come to seek and to save the lost. Anybody remember that? Anybody know where it is? I don't either. But it's in there somewhere. Uh, if you look at the Greek, for the, for the Bible nerds like myself, if you look at the Greek of that, when he says, uh, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost, uh, the word lost is really better translated as perishing. So, man, you, you nailed that one just, just on the head. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are perishing. It just changes the whole verse, but um, that, that, that hymn reminded me of that, so thank you for that. Uh, I love this time we can come and we can lift up our prayers and our concerns and our joys and our, our fears and, and just all the good things and hand them into the hands of, of a, perfect, a perfect father. Um, any, anything we'd like to bring forward this morning? I have something. My great niece is having a baby. The baby has heart issues. She'll be having it this week at Duke and the baby will immediately be taken into heart surgery. So pray for Emma Franklin and baby Oliver. Okay, so that didn't go Friday. I thought, was it, was it a thing about maybe? They postponed it. <coughs> okay. okay. Um. Please, please continue to remember my sister, Willie Jean Noggle, and all of us, the family, and also our daughter, Mary. Oh, Thank you so much. I know it's on the prayer list, but I just have to lift yeah. it out every, Amen. every Sunday. Because I know they're, they're traveling back and forth to Duke? Chapel Hill. Chapel Hill. Uh, so just the travels, the wear and tear, I mean, we need to keep them just bathed in our, our prayers. So. Paul Marshall has a neighbor who was in an accident a couple of months ago, and he's really having a hard time. We need to keep Paul in prayer. Amen. Thank you. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. That's wonderful. Anybody want to try to top that one? <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Uh, we definitely want to cover that family in prayer. I mean, you're not supposed to bury children. Um. Well, I have one. Marty and I are going to be great grandparents. It seems like we have a honeymoon baby from Zachary and Daniela. <laughs> <laughs> so they weren't out touring uh, during their honeymoon, I guess. Um, wow, I can't believe I said that with, with my district superintendent sitting right there. But, but we would definitely love for you to go first through the, the line. <laughs> um, do we have anything else? Let's take these and any unspoken uh, that we have to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Father, again, I just thank you for the beautiful day you've given us. Uh, I thank you for this time that we can come and we can uh, be in your presence in, in a special way. You know, you're with us always, but uh, when the body of Christ gathers together to worship, it's just a, a wonderful time. And Father, we just want to stop and, and lift up um, all of these concerns, these joys, uh, and place them in your hands. Because we know that you hear us when we pray, and you desire to hear from us. And we claim the promises that you have given us, that where two or more are gathered together, that it will move your hand. And so Father, we pray with great expectation. Uh, these aren't just empty words, but, but we're waiting and we are thanking you for the results that are coming. Um, even if it's not the results that we desire, uh, we know that in your perfect vision, uh, you will do good things for your children. Uh, Father, I, I thank you for this church and I pray that you will just continue to guide us as we uh, work to seek the vision that you have for us uh, that you will make your words known uh, Father I pray for all the ministry teams that are out there that are uh, putting in place 
the structures and the ministries and the things that, that we believe you have ordained, and we thank you for that. Uh, Father, we also play, pray for our community. Uh, outside these doors, there's brokenness and, and hunger and hurt. Uh, and these are our people. Uh, you have placed Grace Chapel in this area to be your representative to these people. So, Father, send your Holy Spirit out there. Uh, begin to, to prick the hearts of those that need to hear from you. And then, Father, send us out uh, with boldness and with courage uh, to be the hands and feet and the heart, the face, the voice of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we also pray for all of our churches. Uh, we're all about doing the same thing, and that's building your kingdom. And so, Father, we just pray that you will strengthen and encourage and guide all of our churches. And we ask all this in the name of the son, your Son, Jesus Christ, as we join together to pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Lead us not against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let me invite any children that like to go to Children's Church. You can be dismissed at this time. Today, uh, you, have, you have reached a milestone that you all should leave here with great pride and feeling of accomplishment. Uh, you have survived the longest sermon series that I have ever preached in my career. As we come now to, yeah. Um, I'm supposed to sit down and be yeah, quiet, aren't I? <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why I carry the bull. No, no, no. You don't want that. Standing on this mountain top, looking just how far we come. Knowing that for every step you were with us, 
you know, the church I came from, we went from straight from the uh, prayers and the sermon. The old habits are hard to break. First time that I skipped it, Suzanne was very gracious. She just let me keep on rolling. But we're going to get you one of those Nerf rocket launchers so you can sit over there and start you know, shooting we'll just, at me. We'll just do... <coughs> just, you know, whatever. Throw something at me. But, uh, but yeah, today we have reached the concluding message in the book of Daniel. Uh, 12 Sundays, like I said, the longest that I've ever done. And I really hope you've enjoyed this study as much as I have. Uh, I just love the book of Daniel. There's so much to it. Um, and, and today is, is a great opportunity for us to really to thank God for this astounding book uh, that, that originated in the life of this, this wonderful man by the name of Daniel uh, 600 years before Jesus Christ. And that's what really makes it even more exceptional as we study the prophecies 600 years before Christ. And we have prophecies that are still ongoing today. This is a stimulating book. It's, it's perplexing at times. Uh, it, it's exciting. Uh, but what's important is that this study uh, is that we need to understand the, the big message that God has for us. And that is this. That there is a God in heaven and he is bringing all of history towards this powerful and decisive victory that he will experience. Uh, when I was growing up just down the road in Hudson, uh, my family used to make a, a really big deal about our family vacation. And in my early, early years, we would always go to Miami Beach. But later in elementary, junior high school, uh, we, we switched, we started going to Walt Disney World. Uh, and this family, this is a family tradition that I continue with Victoria. We tried to go to Disney World as much as we could. I, I just love Disney World. Uh, and so, you know, as we would prepare for this vacation, and remember, this was back in the time before there was GPS and cell phones. So my father would, would plan the trip the old-fashioned way. Um, he would get this big foldable map, and, and he would spend hours over the map. And he would be using a highlighter, and he would you know, highlight our route on the map, and he would circle places where we were going to stop along the way, restaurants and hotels and, you know, the world's largest ball of string and all those kind of crazy places. And, 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 and then, of course, he would have in, in huge highlights Walt Disney World. And then in this great drama in an act that, that I cherished and I still remember, uh, we would all sit down and he would unfold the map. And he would let us see just how we're getting there. And can you just imagine how excited we were? And, and since I was young, uh, I, I didn't know what to expect. I, I knew nothing about travel. So he, he wouldn't just show us uh, our route to Disney World, but he would tell us what to expect along the way. Now, you know, on I-85 at Gaffney, you're going to see the giant peach. And if we hit Atlanta at the wrong time, the traffic is probably going to be really heavy. And when you get to the, the Welcome Center in Florida, it's going to have some of the best orange juice that you have ever tasted in your life. And, and, and just when we, we get south of I-10 on I-75, we're going to begin to pick up what used to be, it was the, the Disney Park Welcome Radio. And you could hear the characters talking, and you could hear the sounds of the theme park, and we're still hours away. Uh, but it was just so exciting. And then, you know, just off of I-4, when we arrive, we're going to see the big green sign. And it's going to say Walt Disney World, and it's going to have the castle on the sign. See, I'm excited already. I'm ready to go. Why would he do that? Why would he go to the effort of showing us all this stuff on the map? Why, why would he go to the effort of preparing us ahead of time uh, so that we would know what to expect? Why was it important for our Father to tell us what signs to look for? And as long as we're asking the question, why has God done the same? Over and over, as we've studied through the book of Daniel, you know, I've suggested to you that the Bible is a road map for us. It's a timeline. It's, it's an itinerary of the human journey, especially in the book of Daniel. And, and I think we've still got some of those timelines out in the, in the foyer out there, if you didn't get one. You know, throughout the book of Daniel, God has told us what to expect. 
He's told us what's going to happen. And, and He has prepared us so that we know how to behave when we begin to see the sights, the things happening. So, uh, of course, the book of Daniel, it, it's actually, it is far from the only book in the Bible that does prophecy. It may surprise you to know that 30% of your Bible is comprised of prophecy. And God closes the book of Daniel with this promise in verse 11. He says, those who are wise will understand. Uh, those who study this prophecy, those who, who gather this wisdom, will come to a sense of understanding. Uh, this is the promise of God. That as you study prophecy, you will understand. You will come to, to new levels of understanding. You will have those aha moments in which you say, Oh, now I, I see how this lines up. You know, now I see what that passage really means. It's not always going to be easy. Uh, I, I, even, even I've been doing this for almost 15 years now, I guess. And, and man, I had some tough times slogging through the book of Daniel. You see, you see, God wants to give you what my father gave us. Kind of a glimpse into the future. He, he, he wants to show us the journey. And he, has, uh, he, he promises us a special blessing for those who read and heed these words of prophecy. And, and maybe you've read those words found in the book of Revelation, the, probably the most famous of the prophetic books. It says this, <clears throat> God blesses the one who reads the words of this prophecy to the church. And he blesses all who listen to its message and obey what it says. For the time is near. Um, and I don't know about you, but if, if, if the Bible says if I do this, I'm going to be blessed, I'm going to do this. I, I want every blessing I can get. So to today, you know, many of us are so busy. But we're lost. You know, we're, we're hurried, but with no destination. Uh, anybody know the difference between sp speed and velocity? Any science nerds out there? Speed is 35 miles per hour. Velocity is 35 miles per hour in that direction. Speed and direction is velocity. So many of us, we, we, we're hurried, we, we don't have a destination. We're, we're running faster than ever, but we have no idea where we're going. <clears throat> to, to all who will listen, God will share the blessing of the destination. Um, he, he's going to show you the map. Uh, but, but He will show you the signs to look for along the way as well. He, he opens up the map and He tells us where we're heading. And so chapter 12 begins with a reminder of where we are in history uh, and where history is heading. And He calls it tribulation. The tribulation. So in verse 1 it says, At that time Michael, the great prince who protects your people, he's speaking to Daniel, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, roll up the seal, roll up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go there, <coughs> will go here and there to increase knowledge. <coughs> this, this passage, as well as the rest of chapter 12, um, anticipates a major event that we call the tribulation. Uh, we, we've learned through our study that that is a seven year period in which there will be intense struggle for those who the book of Daniel call your people. Um, it's, it's the Hebrews. Uh, now others will be involved but certainly those who are of Jewish heritage in the city of Jerusalem will face a time of intense struggle. Uh, we've, we've looked at the tribulation in, in previous sermons, so I, I'm not going to really dig into it too deeply. But I want to kind of do a broad look, uh, just so we can, can um, look at the timeline. So we can look at the map just one more time. The scripture tells us that there will be a sudden, unexpected resurrection of the saints. Uh, 
now this is, is often called the rapture. And it's going, to, it's going to happen without warning. But at that moment, every believer who has placed his or her trust in Christ will be resurrected. Um, in a moment, in a twinkling of the eye, it says they will be given a new body and they will be welcomed as the bride of Christ to the wedding feast in heaven. And it will be a glorious day for those who have trusted in Christ. However, this will trigger a difficult day for those that are left behind. Uh, you see, in, in this moment, in, in a millisecond, the church and, and her restraining influence, the Holy Spirit will be gone. And the Holy Spirit is the one who is kind of holding evil at bay right now. Uh, and for a time, the Holy Spirit is going to step away. And can you imagine the ensuing chaos when the church and the Holy Spirit are removed from this society? Uh, when all those who speak and do good and seek to do good are suddenly gone. When all those who teach truth are suddenly missing. Uh, it, 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 just, it just seems to me that their sudden departure will cause a moral and financial and political tailspin. Uh, and, and this world as we know it, will turn into this chaotic mess. Uh, and this chaotic mess is the stage for an evil tool of Satan, which is the Antichrist. Now, according to the prophecy of Daniel 9, the Antichrist is going to step forward in the middle of this chaos, and he's going to broker a peace treaty with the Middle East that will seem to settle everything down. It's, it's going to encompass the world uh, looking back at Daniel 9, verse 27, uh, that promises this. That leader, the Antichrist, will make a firm agreement with many people for seven years. He will stop the offerings and sacrifices after three and one-half years. A destroyer will do terrible things until the, order, the ordered end comes to the destroyed city. So, so the Antichrist will step forward and he will broker a peace treaty. And apparently this peace treaty will involve uh, the reconstruction of the temple. Yet, as some translations put it, after three and a half years, he is going to stop the offerings and he will um, engage with what Christ calls the abomination of desolation. And he will position himself as a god uh, and demand to be worshipped. And this will trigger a season of suffering. But after this season of suffering, a, a resurrection will occur, as we've just read in Daniel 12. Some to everlasting life, some who rejected God to shame and torment. Most importantly, at the end of these seven years, Christ himself will come. And, and I want to, to reread the, the promise of Daniel 7. It says this, This king, speaking of the Antichrist, will speak against the Most High God. And he will hurt and kill God's holy people. He will try to change times and laws that have already been set. Uh, that's to say that he's going to try to create a, a, a religion that is set up around himself. Uh, the holy people that belong to God will be uh, in that king's power for three and a half years. But then the court will decide what should happen. Uh, and that's the court of God that we're talking about here. The power of the king will be taken away and his kingdom will be completely destroyed. Then the holy people who belong to the most high God will have the power to rule. And they will rule over all the kingdoms under heaven with power and greatness. And their power to rule will last forever. Um, that, that's, that is a beautiful promise from the book of Daniel. Uh, the church will be raptured. The tribulation will be severe. But it's not going to last forever. Christ will return. He will establish his kingdom upon the earth and with his saints he will rule forever. Who are the saints? Yeah. You guys. Exactly. Now, if you have more questions about this, <laughs> so did Daniel. Uh, but before Daniel could ask for an explanation, did you notice that he is told to seal up the book of prophecy? And that's to say that, that no further revelation is going to be coming. You know, Daniel has been, been given all that he is going to be given. This revelation is complete. Even so, 
a couple of questions remain. So we read further in, in chapter 12, starting at verse 5. It says, Then I, Daniel, looked, and there before me stood two others, one on this bank of the river and one on the opposite bank. Uh, and, and from all the studies that I've done, best guess these are, are also angels. Um, one of them said to the man clothed in linen, pay note to that, the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, how long will it be before these astonishing things are fulfilled? How funny. Yeah, we used to ask the same questions on vacation. How long until we get there? That's when my parents would take off a shoe and start swinging and whatever, whoever they hit in the back seat, that, that was the guilty person. The, the, the answer, this answer came from, from Jesus himself, from what most scholars say, the, the man clothed in linen. This is a Christophany. It is an Old Testament vision or appearance of Jesus. Uh, so reading again in, in chapter, uh, starting in verse 7. The man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river lifted his right hand and his left hand towards heaven. And I heard him swear by him who lives forever saying, it will be for a time, times and half a time. Now remember that means one year, two years and a half a year. So for three and a half years. Uh, then the power of the holy people has been, when the power of the holy people has finally been broken, all these things will be completed. I heard, but I did not understand. So I asked, my Lord, what will the outcome of all this be? He replied, go your way, Daniel, because the words are rolled up and sealed until the time of the end. Many will be purified, made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. Daniel needed an explanation, and so he asked, how long until this happens, and what will the, the outcome of all this be? Give us, give us some more details. And Jesus came and gave them the more details. Now, now you and I, we love more details too. Uh, we don't have all of our questions answered. <clears throat> but as we have, have sought God in this study, he's given us more details. And I believe that God has done for us what he did for Daniel. Um, he, he, just, he just gives us more details. Not, maybe not all of our questions are answered, but he gives us the details. And, and in fact, the details that God has given us are sufficient enough to make me think that, that maybe we're nearing the end. Uh, and, and I don't say that lightly. And I realize you know, that every generation there have been those who have said, now this will be the last generation. And from the time when Jesus went up to heaven, they're waiting for him to come back. So there's always, this has always been going on generation after generation after generation. But, but there are certain things that, that, that about our generation that kind of commands our attention, uh, that causes us to wonder, you know, are, are we truly near the end? And someday when we're up in heaven, you can come up to me and smack me and say, you, you were way off base. And, and I could be. You never know. But, but I believe that Christ could come at any moment and, and rapture his church away. And, and I believe that not just because of what I read in the scriptures, uh, but because of what I read in the newspaper. And, and again, to be clear, no one knows the exact time of the Lord's return. Now, Jesus said, no one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. That's in Matthew. Jesus didn't know. So if he didn't know, you pretty good guess I'm not going to know either. You know, the, the exact time is, is hidden from his followers. Uh, we, we don't know the hour, but we have been told to look for the signs. And we've been told to respond to the signs. <coughs> now, you, you know how to respond to signs. You, you see signs when you're driving on the highway or riding in a car. Uh, you know, for example, when, when you see the, the water over the road sign, well, what does that tell you? Uh, well, because of that sign, you're going to anticipate a wet road or maybe flooding up ahead. You, you don't know the exact location or the amount of water, but you anticipate water. Or what about road construction ahead? You don't know the amount of construction or the purpose, but you do know to kind of to be alert and anticipate construction. Jesus has not given us the hour of his return. 
but we have signs. Uh, we, we are traveling through life. We're traveling towards the, our, our final destination. Uh, just like the, my father, he told me what signs to look for. Jesus has kind of said, now here are some signs you can kind of look for. And, you know, they'll kind of give you a warm fuzzy. Um, con- consider what Jesus says about reading the signs. This is Matthew 24, uh, verses 4 through 6. Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Christ. And many will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. But see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen until the end comes. In other words, you know, don't, don't be too quickly misled. You know, people have been declaring the end ever since the beginning. You know, there have been endless skirmishes and conflicts and rumors of war. And, and these really mean nothing, but they're, they're not signs. The, the true signs are these. Look at what he says in, again, Matthew 24, 7 and 8. Nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All of these are the beginnings of birth pains. Now that phrase, birth pains... We men were not actually qualified to explain what a birth pain is. To a man, the common cold is as bad as giving birth. So you kind of know we don't have a good clue. Uh, But I do have it on good authority that birth pains are painful. And they will... (laughs) Yeah, one of the times I get an amen is... is, um, um, And they come with increasing frequency as the time of delivery draws near. Jesus is saying that there are going to be signs and they're going to be painful. And they're going to be disruptive. And and they're going to come with increasing frequency as the end draws near. So, with that in mind, consider a couple of signs of the end. It says, nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdoms. Now, this is actually, and I didn't know this, this is an expression used by Hebrew rabbis in ancient literature that describes a unique type of war. It's an expression that describes a widespread conflict. Um, Our phrase for this type of conflict would be world war. So Jesus is saying you will see world wars. Have we? Of course we have. Twice in the last century... We've seen conflicts that are so universal that the phrase world war was applied to them. Uh, in, in fact, the, the first one was called the war to end all wars. But then came the second one, World War II. And more people have died from war in all of the 20th century than in all of the centuries leading up to the 20th century combined. Increasing frequency increasing pain. So what about natural disasters? Specifically, Jesus says famines and earthquakes. Uh, Of course, the world has always seen these. But did you know that we are seeing these with increasing frequency? For example, earthquakes. According to one study from 1939 to 1976, there were 71 earthquakes. But from 1977 to 2014, there were 164 earthquakes. For you math nerds like myself, that is an increase of 134%. Does it seem to you that that, that birth pains are increasing with frequency? You know, these are signs on the road. Um, And there are more signs. Uh, And and I have time for just a, a couple more. Consider this one. A remarkable sign of our generation is the regathering of the Jewish people in Israel. Did you know that the Bible speaks of a day in which the Jewish people will reoccupy their homeland? Um, Way back in the book of Jeremiah, it says this, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will bring my people Israel and Judah back from captivity and restore them to the land I gave their forefathers to possess, says the Lord. Jeremiah 30. Now, Almost all the key prophecies in the book of Daniel kind of depend upon a repopulated Israel. For example, uh, the book of Daniel prophesies about a covenant between the Antichrist and Israel. This can only happen if the nation of Israel exists. The book of Daniel prophesies about the rebuilding of the temple. Israel must exist. 
must occupy the land in order for this to happen. Daniel forecasts about utter sacrilege of the temple. No Israel, no temple. You know, the, the war of Armageddon only makes sense if Israel is occupying the land where the valley is found. Now, you know, the idea of a repopulated Israel was unthinkable just a few decades ago. <clears throat> And, and, and you know the history. The, the people of Israel were dispersed over seven countries for more than 20 centuries. Yet in our day, we are seeing them return. Did you know today, for the first time since 135 A.D., there are more Jews living in Israel than any place else on the earth? There, there, there is a, a regathering of the Jews to Israel. Could it be a sign? Maybe. Maybe. It, it's, it, it is unique to our generation. Uh, the, the, the super sign, I mean, this should at least kind of get our attention. Uh, not a panic. But, you know, we see it. Now, we could add more signs to that. Globalism. Uh, you know the book of Revelation prophesies a day in the tribulation when an evil ruler will commandeer the world economy and no one will buy or sell without his permission. <clears throat> hundred years ago, this was impossible. But today, thanks to the proliferation of, of electronic banking and, and credit and debit cards, it's possible. It's actually possible now. Uh, the, the, the world is a smaller place. Global, globalism has, has shrunk the globe. And, and scripture repeatedly promises of a plunge into immorality in the end times. Uh, I, I know the world has always been immoral. Yet now, because of the internet, uh, because of the accessibility we have between one culture and the other, uh, between other countries and this one, uh, it wasn't true when I was growing up, but it's true today. Might it get worse? Yeah, probably. You know, can we say that we have plunged into a dark cesspool of immorality? Yeah, probably so. <clears throat> How about these other signs? Mysterious blood moons, the, the attempts at peace at the Middle East, um, increasing uh, apostasy of the church, um, all of these, they add up to make us wonder, could we, be, could we be getting close to the end? Again, no one knows. You know, anyone that says they know, they're wrong. Um, but we should at least kind of pay attention to the signs. You know, the, the Father has told us what to expect. Now, if you are in Christ, you have nothing to fear. And, and, and I suggest these signs are not to increase your level of anxiety, uh, but just the opposite, to, to affirm you. you. You see, Christ said these things would happen, and so we know that he's in control. You, know, you, you know what's coming. But if you have never given your heart to Christ, I, I share these signs really to alert you. Um, you need to be ready. Uh, you, you need to be sure that you have placed yourself into the hands of the Lord, the, the one who controls it all. Um, by the way, we, we never did answer the question, why did my father tell us about the map? Uh, why did he show us where we were going? I think there's a simple answer to that question. I think that he wanted us to know that he knew. He knew where we were headed. He knew what would happen. And you see, it turned out that he was right. That big giant peach stands today just off of I-85 near Gaffney. Traffic in Atlanta, if you hit it at the wrong time, is horrible. Uh, the orange juice at the Florida Welcome Center is amazing. Uh, and, and unfortunately, the Disney radio that you pick up just off of I-75 isn't there today, but it was there when we went, and I loved it. Um, it. It was just so exciting to hear Mickey and Donald and all the noises of the park. And then just off of I-4, we saw the big green sign, Walt Disney World. And it had a castle on it, just like my father prophesied to us. <clears throat> By the time we reached our destination, I was, I was so proud of my dad. 
Um, I trusted him uh, because he had promised and he had delivered. And, and you know, our, our God deserves our worship. He, he has promised and he has delivered. What he said he would do, he has done. So what he says he will do, he will do also. Amen. Let's pray. <clears throat> so, Heavenly Father, we thank you now for this, this great book, this, this powerful book of Daniel. Uh, we thank you, Lord, where we have succeeded in our study. We pray for mercy where we have fallen short. We ask that you give us the blessings that you have promised us. A blessing of assurance, of, of confidence, of faith. And grant that we can be like Daniel in these severe times. And that we can understand and we know that we can trust you. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Would you stand for our closing hymn, Amazing Grace, hymn number 378. <laughs>